He bought Facebook ads to meet the love of his life. Was it money well spent? Let's talk about it. You know, the modern problems, sometimes they require modern solutions. So I'm quite proud of this man, Jack Liu. Let's run the clips. Digital marketer spends 1K on Facebook ad to find a girlfriend. You knew how these social media companies work. They have over 10,000 data points on each person. So I thought, why not leverage that data and use it to solve my own problem? I thought of the website as a sales letter where I am trying to sell a product. And in this case, I'm selling myself. Boom, Andrew, here we go. Jack Leal was from Queens, New York, but he found love through Facebook in Texas. Texas, baby, and he met his Bethany, not Becky, but Bethany. But we're not talking about like uh, him meeting her on a dating app, Andrew. He put an ad out on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about this news article that's going viral right now because he kind of took a different approach by meeting people online. However, I will say that he is trying to promote his own dating website, so I don't know. Who knows what's going on? But anyways, this seems like a interesting kind of unorthodox way to use Facebook ads to meet the love of his life. Right, right so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out SmileLessLess at SmileLessLess.com. Let's take a look at the titles. I'm done with dating apps, so I spent $1,000 promoting myself on Facebook ads to find love. And let's be honest, Andrew, if he meets uh, another girl from Taiwan or China, is this going viral? No, I mean, I think it is matter that she is a white lady and it's a Asian guy, white lady couple. But I also think it's because it kind of echoes a lot of feelings that people have where they want to be done with dating apps. But... What's the alternative? Let's talk about whether this was money well spent, whether $1,000 is actually a lot of money or actually, in my opinion, not a lot of money to meet the love of your life. I'll do and the math I, with and you. And I'm not going to lie. A lot of people are commenting on their looks too because they're saying that uh, the female here, she her name is... Bethany Lambie. Bethany Lambie, she looks like a version of Jessica Chastain and that he looks like a version of Wallace Hua. Yeah, yeah, no, they definitely have, uh, they look like some version of that couple, yes. Right, um, let me just wait, Andrew, I gotta go to straight to the NY Post, because you know, you get the boomer comments right here that are super harsh. First off, it said, Asian girls are considered near the top of the heap in the dating hierarchy, whereas Asian men tend to near fall near the bottom. Sorry, guys, that's why you guys gotta do this. Mm -hmm. Another guy said, oh my gosh, this guy is a super dork, all teeth, no muscle at all, only desperate women would say yes. Somebody says he looks like a uh, caricature of an East Asian. Mm. So people going in on his looks. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he has, he, you know, he's slim. He got high cheekbones. You know, he's not a bad looking guy. And I don't think she's a bad looking woman. That's what I think. I think it's, I think this couple checks out. It's pretty even in my opinion. Listen, I'm not done yet with the NY Post comments, by the way, not my comments. He could have found somebody within the Asian community to date, but he wanted the cockeyed white woman of his Asian fantasies. And then somebody said, yeah, that's because all Asian women are with white guys and taken up already. All right. So anyways, we got our, our own thoughts and then we're going to dive into more of the discussion that's happening on the Asian Instagram here. So by uh, the way, beautiful couple. I like them. I'm supporting them. Okay. You're supporting. I support them too. Why not? It's they fine. look like, I would say, yeah, like they do kind of look like actors and actresses, but just like the Timu version. Yeah. I mean, they look like a 1960s interracial couple, like one of the first Asian guys and white women couples in, you know, Houston. You mean maybe. like in Mississippi when like they, before the gold rush. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, shout out to him. Uh, David, uh, what's your first thought here? All right. Good for him. He took a very difficult situation because despite whether, you know, like I said, there was a lot of arguing over like, is he good looking or not good looking? Because he kind of has one of those like faces, I guess, that's like in between ugly and good looking. But then anyway, I'm saying that he just did whatever he needed to do given his circumstances. Yeah. And, and shouldn't more people do that? Just do what they need to do, right? Like take a think outside of the box for a solution if you're having a problem. You're saying look at your problems in your life less emotionally and hyper-algorithmic. And he just solved the equation. Yeah. And then my point is, you know, I think the headline is like, oh, this guy spent $1,000 on Facebook ads. $1,000 is not that much if you think about how much money you would spend on dates over one year easily. Think about it, guys. If you're his age and you're spending $80 a date. Oh, that's... Most That's, people's minimum. Bro. Yeah. I in, would say in that, a city. If, if you go to the city, you double that. Yeah. So let's just say $80 a date, especially for his age, it's easily 100 So that's only 
10 dates. You're already gonna spend $1,000 and easily of those 10 dates, you will not even meet a girlfriend, the love of your life. I've talked to so many guys and I know guys and I've been on a lot of dates in my, in my past. Uh, you know, you go on like, I don't know, 10 to 20 dates just to meet a girlfriend who actually wants to commit to you and you like her and that you vibe. So ultimately what I'm saying is, if you could spend $1,000 to meet a girlfriend, a long-term girlfriend or the love of your life, that's actually money well spent. It is, it is. Because like you said, in, in a big city, that'd be like six or seven dates, honestly. Yeah. And uh, he was having trouble. So like, and he, and he, you know, with Facebook, Andrew, you could target it to certain demographics so you could more only target what you're looking for mm -hmm. versus like feeling like you need to settle. Yes, exactly. I think about it. His whole argument is like the dating apps, they have their algorithm, but- in a way, Facebook ads, which this might be an advertisement for Facebook ads, really, you can target people pretty uh, pretty, uh, pretty well on Facebook and then ads. Point number three, uh, it kind of relates to point number one, but you just shouldn't be scared of being cringy. Because I would say that a lot of guys would feel like what he did is not something that they would want to do. It's not cool. But they also are not in his situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he might have a cousin that looks, you know, sort of like uh, Jackson Wang or like June Cook or something like that. He probably not going to have to do that. Right, right. No, I mean, shout out to him. He did what he needed to do. Met a nice lady. I support it. Why let's get, not? Let's get into the comments section, Andrew, because there's a lot of good discussions here that are, that are uh, either directly about this case or correlated. Happy for him. Sad that he had to do this. And then basically this white woman came in and said, dating scene is already bad for everybody. And then it's extra hard for Asian guys. Asian guys got to be busting out all this SEO hyper algorithmic stuff just to get a date. Well, to be honest, his job is a digital marketer. So he was actually already familiar with this. And he actually knew how effective the the Facebook ads and targeting could be. So actually he just used the knowledge from his industry and used it for himself instead of marketing a product marketed himself yeah i mean let's be honest he does seem like a pretty brainy guy who probably growing up has a lot more reps understanding data pools and data sets and data plot charts rather than i guess like what the hyper emotional romantic side of dating mm -hmm. so that's where his iq was so he just applied his iq from that lane to get success in a different lane of life or other muscles that were atrophied or never developed to begin with um somebody said that's beta male ish this is from a really buff Korean Taekwondo guy. He was just like, yo, I would never do that. But yeah, maybe you should never do that. Not every guy should do this. How about that? But I think the guys, I think it just goes to show you that there are other ways. I'm not saying every guy should do this, but I'm just saying there's other ways to do it. And I think obviously for his age group, meeting a lady who's 36, he's 37, it really fits. Facebook ads really plays into the 30 and up crowd. Right. Somebody said, personally, people who drop their religion as the first thing about them are a red flag. And then people said, no, that's a green flag for those people who place a high priority in religious compatibility because, Andrew, he was very Christian. He named it as the very first sentence of his dating profile, even before Asian, and then he marketed it in Texas, yeah. where a lot of people are Christian. Yeah. Hey, that's smart. I mean, I, I'm guessing he tried or didn't try some of the Christian dating apps. Right. Like At the end of the day, Facebook, you actually have a larger reach because everybody has Facebook. Would you say like people on maybe Tinder or Hinge are just more a-religious because they're all just living like heathens? Yeah, I don't think they... <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of. Well, if you're hyper-religious, you're probably going to go on a hyper-religious centric app, right? Or yeah. Coffee meets bagel is a little bit more like that. Uh, somebody said, is this the best Asian news today, guys? And then just somebody, basically people were arguing in the next shark Asian community about why even post this. And people said, guys, finding love sounds like great news to me, huh? Why is it always an Asian woman posting saying that this is stupid? Of course, getting into the, uh, you know, Asian female versus Asian guy wars. Classic. Somebody said, his smile looks like he's in pain. And basically, Andrew, there was a huge discussion that broke down about, is this guy good looking or not? Because why would he have problems, Andrew, if he was a tech founder, SEO marketer that made a lot of money? I don't know, guys. I mean, I don't really, I just feel like that's not the most important discussion here. I think it should really be about- But it's a human discussion, is it not? Yeah, if, if we treat the Instagram comment sections like a gossiping family party on like a Sunday, you know what I mean? Like, is it a valid yeah, discussion? Yeah, but why aren't more guys taking cues from this guy? Maybe there's some 35, 40-year-old dudes out there who should probably do the same thing. Right, but then this turned into a discussion, Andrew, because a guy questioned the good-lookingness of both him and the girl. And then people went in on this guy 
John threes and said, yo, man, you shouldn't even be talking with that soy boy baby face of yours. Mm. So basically what I wanted to talk about real quick, and this is like a little bit of a side, but it's an interesting conversation, Andrew. How do you rank having a baby face versus having off-putting features? Let's say you look like an actor that got hit with a slight zombie ray versus looking like a soy boy baby face who's like, you know, let's just say 15 years old. Different people value different things when it comes to looks. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Or, like, and some people just don't, as long as you fall somewhere in the ballpark, they're not breaking down your face with minutia. Like some people who are dating. Like, I don't think everybody on the dating apps should treat it like they're some modeling casting agency and be that straight. But isn't that what people do do, but they just... Not, not obviously if you're not a casting agent you haven't been coached on the iq i know that's part of, of the issue nowadays with dating on the apps is that everybody is being super critical you're saying about, everybody's acting like a modeling agent yeah everybody's being super critical about your facial features to the point where they're not even matching or going on dates with each other that's part of the issue right you're saying they're both canceling each other at the filtration process. Yes. And then somebody said, this girl said, no Oxford study comments, huh? Because obviously anytime you see right now a white, an Asian girl with a white guy in media, there is people in the comments that say Oxford study. And then he said, Asian American girls won't date him. Let him date whoever he likes, huh? Why are you moaning? Back to the, the wars mm. between genders, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Ultimately, I'll say this, man. You know, I, I just think that he figured out a very difficult situation. He probably liked white women. He wasn't getting them in Queens, New York. Moved to Texas, put out an ad. But for me, I'd be like, maybe go overseas. I don't know if every guy needs to. But he, he set his parameters of where he was willing to go, which was like within continental United States, right? Mainland USA. And he made it work. But I guess I would, my recommendation for most guys would be like, yeah, he probably could have went overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Eastern Europe or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if, if you like that look, there's a lot of options, but maybe you wanted an American Christian lady, which you would have to get an American Christian from America, right? So I think overall, man, dating to me, a lot of dudes are caught on how young and beautiful is this girl that I can get with. And then a lot of women are caught up on like, oh, this guy's got to have this and this and this set up ready for me, blah, blah, blah. Tall, rich, Chad. He's got to be tall status. and have everything set up, emotionally intelligent, masculine, and have money. And then guys are like, oh, well, the girl's got to be younger and prettier than me for sure and, and super cute. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, uh, the reason why so many people would get married back in the day is that they just, they weren't always just waiting for something that was like, just a little bit better. They would just make it work and you would just choose each other. And that's actually still how dating works. Because right now, if you just keep waiting for something that you think is perfect to come by, and then when you think it's perfect, it's supposed to all fall into place, then you're really waiting on almost such a small chance or maybe you're just waiting on nothing at all. But I'm waiting for my Jungkook. But I'm waiting for my Chaewon. Yeah. So I think that... You know, he's at that age and she's at that age where they're both looking for something more stable. And they just like, at that point, it's a lot easier. Just like, hey, you hit these parameters. Let's give it a shot. Right. And uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. A lot of comments, a lot of interesting dynamics, even in the comments section. Um, you know, I think even with like trivial pieces of news like this, there's always, it's an easier way to like broach different topics that people aren't always comfortable broaching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Share this with your friends. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.